beautiful Zion that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Fear of death and the things of this world are a destroyer of the soul, but fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of life the path of righteousness, and the passcode to the kingdom. Brother Jonas 1, verse 7. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jonas, and the title of this video is An Israelite's Wife and His Mistress. Brothers and sisters, I'm an Israelite, happy and married, but I must confess to you all that I have a mistress. She does things to me and for me that my wife just cannot do. She pleases me in every aspect of my life and comfort me when no one else can. I thought that I would come clean and confess and confess her name, bearing no shame. Her name is Wisdom. That's right, Wisdom. For a minute, some of you all thought, I was off the chain of righteousness, swinging in the world. My wife satisfied my flesh, and my mistress' wisdom satisfies my soul. Now, do you see the clear picture? King Solomon, having great wisdom, didn't listen to the wisdom that he had, because if he had, he would not have married all the women of other nations. We're going to look at this lady wisdom and ladies don't take this the wrong way, but you can't compete with this lady because this lady wisdom has her relationship with the soul and not the body. She's a brick house, a bad mama jamma, and a family bag of chips and so much more. My reference of wisdom as a lady comes from God. He refers to wisdom as a lady in Wisdom of Solomon, which is in the Apocrypha the book between the Old and the New Testament, and it has 400 years of our history concerning the Greeks, who later became Romans, who are the Edomites today. Let's examine this lady wisdom and get to know her, and maybe you'll fall in love with her. And ladies or sisters of Israel, let wisdom be a mother to you, teaching you things your flesh mothers could never teach, and guiding you all the days of your life and don't hate your husbands for loving this lady she's no threat to you let's start with wisdom 1 verse 4 for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin this lady wisdom would not date someone with a malicious soul nor live in the body with the soul that is subject to sin or is committing sin. Verse 5 For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. We see this lady wisdom as it referred to is the Holy Spirit of discipline. Key word, discipline. It is righteous discipline that will get us into the kingdom of heaven. Wisdom will flee anyone with deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not hang around in you when unrighteousness enter you. Verse 6, For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words for the most high is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue wisdom is a loving spirit and will not forgive a blasphemer of his words for god is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue in short God hears everything we say, and he knows our true thoughts, 
and watch our walk. We cannot deceive him as we deceive each other. Now, you're going to learn something about suicide. God says, don't do it. When you screw up in life or you feel you're at the bottom because life events or your choices have taken you down to the bottom. Wisdom 1 verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. God said, don't turn to killing yourself when you make a mistake in life. And don't drag bad things into your life by what you do or by the choices you make. We deal with family and people in our lives that think they should live for the day and not live for a kingdom that will come. Let's hear what wisdom says. Wisdom 2 verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. The ungodly said after reasoning with themselves, as people do today, and not thinking straight, but crooked, our life is short. They say life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Or... After death, we can do nothing. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. They don't believe in resurrection. So live it up while you can. And that's what a lot of people do today. And that's what our enemy Esau, the Edomites, try to get us to do by watching their television programs, their movies and such. Wisdom 2 verse 5. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. This is what they're thinking, and a lot of people think that way today. They said our time is short and there is no coming back after death. Well, if you believe that, you are already done. Verse 6, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. They said, let's live for now, forsaken tomorrow. Verse 10, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged. When you live for the here and now, forsaken tomorrow and the kingdom, wickedness fills your mind. They said, let us oppress the poor righteous man or do evil to him. Let us not spare the widow or do evil to the widow also, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged or let's disrespect the older people which have gray hair. We can take advantage of them. They can't fight back. Verse 12. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us with our offending the law and objecteth to our infamy the transgressions of our education. All this is a lack of wisdom. They said, let us lie in wait for the righteous or ambush the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings or because the righteous don't sin as we do. So let's mess with them. He upbraided or find fault with us because we break God's law and object to our infamy or bad reputation and the transgressions of our education, meaning the learning and perfecting of their evil doings. The righteous is against all those things, so they want to be against the righteous. 
wisdom. She is going to show us events in these last days and how she will comfort us and strengthen us for what we must do in the very near future. Wisdom 5 verse 1 Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Some of us will be captured and brought before our enemies because we are Israelites. Many of our own people will see as well, and we will be strong and bold in our hour of trouble. Guaranteed. Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they look for. Our enemies and the weak of our people will see it and be upset with terrible fear and will be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation, so far beyond all that they had imagined. The Most High is going to do things in a way that we can't even imagine. And as I always say, I have a very good imagination. Verse 3. And they, repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Many of our people will repent and groan for anguish of spirit. They will say to themselves, This was he whom we sometimes ridiculed and mocked and chewed out verbally. See, a lot of us today, we're being ridiculed and mocked because we believe the word of God. We wear fringes on our clothes and ribbons of blue. The ladies wear head wraps and dresses and we get ridiculed for it. And we worship on the Sabbath. We don't do anything, go out partying or, or buying and stuff on the Sabbath. And that's their main day for doing all these things. So we get ridiculed and mocked. Verse 4. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. You see, many people think that living righteously is crazy. They count it as unworthy or a waste of time and effort having no measurable reward. So things are flipped. They look at us like we're out of our minds, but we clearly know they're the ones that are in deep do. Verse five, how is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints? People that know you or knew you will be surprised. They will say, how is he numbered among the children of God? And his reward is among the saints. It's hard for the wicked to believe that you being previously wicked can receive the heavenly promises. And that's because they don't believe what Christ said in his teachings or they are ignorant of his teachings. If Paul can repent from all he did, we all can repent also for no matter what you have done in life. Verse six, therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. It's easy for the unrighteous to measure his or her life against the righteous. If they care enough to look in the mirror and ask themselves, what are the wages of sin? And where do I stand at this present time in my life? Which way is up? Because we all know which way is down. So they need to ask themselves, which way is up? And the way up is through the word. Verse eight, what hath pride profited us or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? We have to ask ourselves, what have 
pride profited us? Or what good having riches with our vaunting or boasting has brought us? So vaunting is boasting. And we know that there are a lot of people out there with money. When they get it, they boast. And they think they need nothing else in this world. A lot of people think they have arrived at the top once they have money. Not realizing that they are still on the bottom. In a pit of hell. Verse 9. All those things are passed away like a shadow. And as a post that hasted by. And as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token or sign of her way to be found, but the light of air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them is passed through. And therein afterwards, no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parteth the air, which immediately cometh together again. You have to visualize these things so that a man cannot know where it went through. All the things of this world we accumulate and possess and own including our own lives, will pass away like a puff of smoke. Life is just that quick. No matter if you live 50 years or 100 years, our life is like a puff of smoke that faded away. Verse 13. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end. And had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. Israel, don't you know most people live their lives not knowing what their lives were for? People always say, well, what, what's, life, what's life for? What is life all about? And then you get some white folks coming out with their books trying to explain to you what life is. And it's a very simple thing. That our lives are a test of worthiness to determine if we will receive eternal life or eternal damnation in the lake of fire. It is simple. Life is a test. Now you can go all to the left field and enjoy all the wickedness that this life has to offer and you will fail the test and you will get eternal damnation in the lake of fire. Or you can go off in right field and seek the most high, repent of your sins and pass the test and receive eternal life. It's a simple thing. Life is simply a test. God is testing us. Verse 14. For the hope of the godly is like dust that is blown away with the wind like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest, and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. The hope we have as godly righteous people is fragile, thin, easily moved, and can quickly be forgotten if we don't maintain the path of righteousness. We have to always remain focused on the creator and on what he tells us to do and how he tells us to do it and obey him. We have to remain on that path or we will find ourselves making a wrong turn with hillbillies trying to kill us. Just a little movie buff in that little thing there. Verse 15, but the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand, for with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm 
shall he protect them. My mistress wisdom whisper these words in my ear and comfort me to help keep me stable in my walk through this hell we're in. We will receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown will be put on our heads by Christ himself with his right hand. Will he cover us and with his arm will he protect us? Verse 17. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Christ will take to him his jealousy for complete armor. He will remember all that the nations did to us and make the creature or Israelite his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. We will become the battle axe of God and do all his pleasure against the nations. Those are going to be fun times, guys. Fun times. This will take place during the day of the Lord or during the seven vials of God's wrath being poured out in a couple of years. Yeah, it's that close. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all can't see that the first four seals are wide open now, you're asleep. You're dead asleep. These things are going to move quickly, so fast that you're not going to have time to think, more or less time to try to pick up a Bible. You need to get digging into this word now because the days are short. Believe me when I tell you this. Verse 18, he shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of an helmet. He shall take holiness for an invisible shield. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for his sword, and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad, and from the clouds, as from a well drawn bowl, shall they fly to the mark, and hailstones full of wrath shall be cast out of a stone bowl. And the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the floods shall cruelly drown them. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away. Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. These times will seem like a pleasant dream for us, the righteous and a hellish, hellish nightmare for the wicked of this world. It's very, it's very close, y'all. It's very close. Wisdom 6, verse 1. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord. That's right. All these people that are in power now, from small to great, God has put them where they are. Don't worry about the things that they're doing. The Most High has its reason for putting them there. And sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. God is speaking to the Israelite kings and kings of other nations and warning them to listen to him and seek his counsel and abide by his law, his law, not man's law, his law, which is righteous. Verse four, because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. These kings, which God placed in various nations and in Israel throughout history, have done and are doing wickedly. Verse 5. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. Solomon is telling them, with great wrath and with quick judgment, to those that be in high places will God strike. Verse 6. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. Mercy will pardon those that come to repentance, 
but those that remain mighty in their evil doings will be mightily tormented. Verse 7. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike. God fear no man, or stand in awe of any man's presumed greatness, even if he think he has the biggest mic in Israel. God made the small and great, and cares for all that wish to do well according to his will. Yeah, that's what that brother that think he got the biggest mic in Israel. See, that's the wrong kind of attitude that's going to cause these Negroes to get burned. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much education you got. If you don't humble yourself down and submit to the Most High's will and his word and show respect to the prophets, to the preachers, to the teachers that the Most High have lifted up, you're going to end up in the lake of fire dreaming about all that money and power you had. Verse 8, But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. The history of our Bible and man's history proves that sore trials have come upon the mighty and will continue to do so in greater and unimaginable ways. Boy, we ain't seen nothing. The movies cannot describe what's going to go down here. I'm telling you, it simply cannot. Esau have tried throughout history in their television and movies to portray things that will happen in the future. And they haven't gotten it right. Believe me when I tell you, the most high got surprises. Verse nine, unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. Of all the women a man can obtain, he should search for a lady to keep him balanced. And that lady is wisdom. No flesh lady can balance a man. Only the lady wisdom can balance a man. Verse 10. For they that keep holiness holy shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer for they that keep holiness holy shall be judged holy but you have to be able to recognize holiness and to do that you have to have some understanding of God's word because if you don't have any understanding of God's word you have no clue what holiness is you may think it's some crap that Christianity teaches you may think like Christians that they can just name somebody a saint, St. Bernard, St. Knucklehead. You can't do that because, see, the word tells us that only the Israelites, only the Israelites are saints. So, see, if you don't have an understanding of the Bible, then you will believe whatever you see in TV and, and whatever Christianity tells you. Verse 11. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is the only woman we should lust after. We should desire her. We should pay attention to her. We should listen to her, and she will instruct us. And yes, that's the only woman that should be instructing us too. Wisdom. Our wives should not instruct us. It's okay if they give us advice. They are helpers, but they should not be ruling over us as we so much see. And as you so much see in TV shows and movies, they got women uh, ruling everything. They have a 150 pound woman beating up a 270 pound man. Are you kidding me? Verse 12. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. Wisdom is glorious. On a scale of one to ten, she is infinite. You heard me right. On a scale of one to ten, she's off the charts. She 
is infinite and never fade away. She is easily seen of them that love her. If you love wisdom, you love the word of God. If you seek wisdom, you're seeking the word of God. And this is simply the most high telling you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But see, you have to get up off your butts and you have to take 10 steps toward God before he takes one step towards you. He ain't coming to you. You got to want to come to him. And then when he see the truth of your spirit that you so desire to repent, that you so desire the word, then he will open you up and you will begin to understand these things. I saw something the other day on YouTube. We got these brothers out there teaching people that North America, South America, these lands over here is the promised land. This is their Azareth that, that's spoken of. This is Azareth, North America, South America, the Western Hemisphere is Azareth. These lands were promised to Northern Kingdom Israel. They came over here hundreds of years ago before the white man set foot over here. These were good lands, are good lands, rich with resources, but this is not the promised land. They're saying Israel is not the promised land, but this Western Hemisphere or the United States is. These are some messed up Negroes. I love my people, but they do not understand the word. They do not know what they're talking about. And they need to search their souls and stop teaching this madness because this land is crap. And it's going to be a hell on earth before the Most High is done with it. Now I digress. Let me get back on path here. Verse 13. She prevented them that desire her in making herself first known unto them. Wisdom will keep you from pitfalls as you come to know her. It's as simple as a parent teaching a child. If the parents teach children properly in their youth, those children will grow up knowing where not to step. I ain't going to step on this anthill. Those ants will get me. I'm not going to step on this snake pit. Those snakes will get me. But when your parents don't teach you anything, those children grow up not knowing anything, and they step in a lot of mess and go through a lot of pitfalls and look back on their lives and say, man, my life was a piece of crap. My life was a waste. So we have to go after wisdom and we have to let wisdom guide us so we make the right decisions in life. Verse 14, whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. Most of us didn't seek wisdom early in life and had many travails from boneheaded decisions we made. Using that slut, that slut, we knew our own personal lack of wisdom. Yeah, that's the slut, our own personal lack of wisdom. Yeah, that slut led us down many wrong paths. True wisdom was sitting at our door the whole time. We walked past her every day, going in and out. And that beautiful lady was sitting right there at our door the whole time. And we couldn't see it. Verse 15, to think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. People say no one is perfect, but to think upon her is perfection of wisdom and whoever watch for her will quickly be without care. We call that peace of mind. And yes, you can be perfect in the eyes of the most high. Job was perfect in the eyes of the Most High. Did he have sin? Yes, he did. Did he make mistakes? Yes, he did, just as we do today. It is not talking about perfection as uh, the Edomites would define perfection. And it's not talking about perfection as Christ was perfect without any mistakes. He walked the walk for us, took the sins, so that we could be seen as perfect in the eyes of God. He's the mediator that says, I know what they went through, Heavenly Father. I felt all the things they felt. I was tempted with all the things they're tempted with. 
So, yes, we can be perfect by simply obeying the Most High. Verse 16. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For she goes about seeking those that are worthy of her. To be worthy, you must repent and seek the Most High, and then wisdom will show herself favorably to you in the ways, and meet you in every thought that you have. So when you get a crazy thought about doing something sinful, wisdom would say, you know what? That's sin. Don't do that because the angels see you. God sees you. Nobody else might not see you, but the ones that really count see you. So you'll think twice about doing something wrong. You'll think about the consequences of your actions. Because let me tell y'all something. You think nobody's watching? Somebody is always watching. If it's not God, the angels, your neighbors, hidden cameras, somebody is watching. Verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. For the very true beginning of her is, is the desire of discipline. How many of us desire discipline? And discipline is what Israel has lacked throughout our history. And the care of discipline, the care of discipline is love. Discipline is the law of God. Let me say that again. Discipline is the law of God. And keeping the law or commandments is loving God. It's just that simple. And scripture tells you that. If you love God, you'll keep his commandments. Simple. So don't say you love God if you ain't keeping his commandments. You're a liar if you do. What are them your words? No, those are scriptures in the Bible. Find them. Seek them. Convince yourselves. Verse 18. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto God. Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. In short, brothers and sisters, if you will enter into life or the kingdom, keep the commandments. That's Matthew nineteen seventeen, Verse 21. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, that ye may reign forevermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity and bring the knowledge of her into light and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. If your intentions are not righteous, then you or any man will not fellowship with wisdom. It's not something that can be bought. It's not something that a highly educated person can just go and get. If the intentions of your soul are not to be righteous, you will not obtain wisdom. Keep that in mind. And the Most High knows your thoughts. He knows your intentions. He knows what you truly desire. The spirit that lives inside of your body knows what you truly desire. Verse 24. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world. And a wise king is the upholding of the people. The multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world. And this present world lack wisdom, as we see it today. And a wise king is the upholding of the people. If the king is wise or righteous, so are the people as a whole. But if the head or king is unwise or wicked, so are the people as a whole. 
If the head is sick, so is the body. Now, we've seen this quite often in the Bible in Israelite history. When we had righteous kings, people tend to do the right things. When we had judges and mighty men, people tend to do the right things. When, when the mighty men were killed and died off, people went wicked. When we had evil kings in power, the people went wicked. That's just the way it is. Verse 25. Receive therefore instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Receive instruction through God's word, and it will do you good. Wisdom is the only woman we should lust after. She is a pure virgin to every man that find her and lay with her. Of all the women a man might obtain, of all the beauty beholding a woman, of all the love a woman has to give, no woman, not even my wife, stands above this lady, my mistress wisdom. There is only one God, and there is only one wisdom. Seek her and have peace. Seek her and have life. Peace to you, Israel. Remember, tick tock.